Whoa, well, what's up? Okay, it's YouTube. So this is a new like type of video I want to make. Yeah, I'm going to try to just talk for as long as I can talk for, um, hopefully I'll go over the, the two hour mark, but I don't think so. My mom might be home soon. But the reason I want to do this is because I feel like, I don't know, I like uh, you know, expressing myself. So if I can express myself in front of a large group of people, even if it's like fucking three people, I know not very many people view my videos. But if I can uh, express myself in front of a lot of people, then I, don't know, I feel that that's the best way to improve yourself. Because then other, you can watch it yourself, and then you can look at it and go, wow, I'm kind of uh, egocentric. Or other people can look at it and go, people can just tell you, you know, th well, this, you said, well, you said this, I, I found this. And uh, me, personally, I like soaking up information and knowledge. And uh, I uh, came to the room when I was uh, 17. I realized that the reason that humans have gone the big reason the humans have gotten as far as they've gone, as far as, you know, obviously we're m way more advanced than any other species. And the reason for that is simply because we can communicate so well. And with every new form of communication, technology grows and grows and grows. So, you know, it wasn't that long ago where the only form of communication was talking. Just like you had to, like, oh, you got to meet in person. And then someone invented mail, so you can write letters. So you can, suddenly people can, you know, talk to people from, you know, they can talk to people from a far, a further distance away, but that's kind of inefficient because you can, you don't say that, you can't, it's hard to express yourself very much because it takes a long time to get there. So you'll tell them, then it'll be three weeks. And I mean, what's now, and then newspapers is another thing. The newspapers, you, for a long time, news used to be word of mouth. And then, I, I mean, I, I don't research this, you know, I don't know when the fucking first newspaper was came out, but it, I'm assuming uh, 1500s is when the newspapers and the, the likes started coming out, and then suddenly everybody kind of knows uh, some stories, but they don't know everything, and because um, they know, you know, whatever the newspapers publish. And obviously, kings and stuff are very aware that, like, okay, well, you can't publish this, because if you publish this, then we can kill you. So, because... And then it's telephones, so people can communicate uh, all over the world with each other. And now the internet. And once the internet came out, like this is why we have such an influx of information and technology because there's so many people that are. Con it's like we're all connected to each other, and that's awesome. I, I, I love that we're all connected to each other because and it's like we're all smart. This whole Occupy Wall Street movement. The one of the big reasons it's I think that this is going on is because for the longest time. I mean, and I speak about myself included, I mean, every, nobody really knew what was going on as far as, you know, what the government is doing and, and uh, what, you know, all this stuff that's kind of going on behind people's backs and that's not being reported on. And now that, you know, the internet came out, all people's got to do is link you to an article. Okay, so it's not posted in the Washington Post or it's not being on CNN, but look at this. I mean, there's the evidence of it. So people see this and they see all the crazy stuff that's going on, especially WikiLeaks. I mean, I don't want to get into that. I don't really know a whole lot about it, honestly. I, I support it, uh, uh, but it is, but you know, there's so many things, so I don't like look at all of it, but I mean, I know what it's about. But. I mean, that that's crazy, and I think that's one of the reasons that you have uh, not only Occupy Wall Street, but the Tea Party movement, too. And the, the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street are both important because that means that really both sides are against the, the current government. And I personally, and I, I, by the way, this issue, this, don't think this is going to be all about politics. This is just me rambling. I, I have a tendency to ramble and, and get distracted. But actually, you know what? <laughs> both sides are against the current government. And I think a lot of people have come to the realization that this government's not so different than the last government. But uh, Obama, President Barack, Barack Obama, is not so different from President Bush. So that's why both parties are kind of uh, you know, upset. Uh, so with that out of the way, <laughs> uh, I know this, uh, the time is probably going to scare a lot of people. So I already said like that now, you know. Don't watch the video. I would just open a new tab, browse fortune, play your MMORPGs. Uh, I don't know about pornography. You can pause this video if you want to do that. Or if you want to listen to my voice while you masturbate, you know, that's fine with me. I'm not against it. Um, but, you know, please leave me comments and please leave me feedback. Because if I don't get comments and feedback, then 
I'm like, I'm not, am I doing the right thing? And that, that's, a, that's the biggest thing is that I don't get very many comments, except on the older Pokemon Remix videos. Uh, and there are, even those comments are just like, oh, <laughs> this is funny. And a bunch of people are trying to make funny comments instead of giving me like criticisms or anything. So let's get that out of the way and I'm going to grab my water. I'll be right back. Cause I'm gonna be without ya But my feelings just a little bit too strong Let's talk about Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is my favorite band ever. Uh, I mean, I, I, I find myself in life going, always going back to Black Sabbath. I got into them... Actually, Black Sabbath's probably the first... Uh, Paranoid's the first album easily that I heard, like, the first full album that I heard. Because uh, my dad, growing up, my dad really, the only music he liked was anything past, anything past the 70s, my dad did not like. <laughs> so my dad liked Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, and those sorts of bands. And uh, I mean, of course, the psychedelics bands. I remember, I don't know if you guys know Country Joe and the Fish, but they played at Woodstock, and I think he had a live Woodstock CD or something, but there was a Country Joe and the Fish I would always be like, Give me an F! Give me a U! Give me a C! Give me a K! What's that spell? What's that spell? What's that spell? And my dad would like play that all the time. And then, you know, we lived in a really poor, shitty household as a kid. So, and my dad was also, man, I, I love my dad so much. Uh, he died a few years ago, and uh, you know, it sucks because uh, he. I was. I realized as an adult now, I, I was really fucking scared of him as a kid because he yelled a lot. He did, he, I think I got spanked until I was like nine, but it, it wasn't very many spankings. And and then after I was nine, he got to the point where occasionally like, he would just like beat the shit out of me. Like he'd like pick me up and fucking throw me. Like he would just like scare me, it would like frighten me. And usually he was drunk when he did it. He, my dad was an alcoholic. He didn't get drunk that often, but every time he got drunk, he was so fucking me. He's a completely different person. And it's hard to describe because in some ways he was nicer because he was, uh, I mean, he was more relaxed and laid back and he wasn't as young. He was easier, but at, more at ease with himself. But he was also a lot more impulsive and it was a lot uh, scary. I remember when I think I was six or seven, I'm pretty sure I was six, and I got off the bus from kindergarten and I went to on my house and on the porch of my house was my dad passed out and I was scared shitless because I I was only six. I didn't know the concept of people passing out or anything of that nature. I didn't know what the fuck that meant. So I thought he was dead and I was just like, what? You know, I was like shaking him and shit and like, oh, what the fuck is going on? And I mean, cell phones are another thing. I forgot about the communication. Cell phones, everybody's connected all the time. You just gotta be at the house anymore. Think about it, I, I, mean, I realize this all the time, like in the 80s, Dude, if you got lost or standing on the side of the road, you were kind of fucked until a stranger saw you. Now you can, like, at least call, like, I'm on the side of the road, I know where the fuck I am, call the cops. But back then, dude, you're fucked. You're on the side of the road, sorry, dude. Anyway, talk about my dad again, because I love the guy. And, I mean, it sucks, but he scared the fucking shit out of me because he yelled constantly. Like, and I'm not talking about, like, just, like, having a loud voice. Like, he'd yell and he'd, like, almost demean me with the whole family because he was very stressed out. Uh, Tyler was backstory about my dad, and this is before I was born. He was working with an oil field company, and what had happened was like a rod, like it was like this thick. I'm not exaggerating at all. He had the rod for the longest time. I don't know what the fuck happened to it. But it was like this thick, and it had fallen, and it, boom, right between here, and it landed. It hit him in here, and then it came out, like, right here. His heart was apparently wrapped around it. He's very lucky that he survived. And this was, I believe, my sister, Janessa, who is, uh, I think she's 26. I'm pretty sure she's 26. She's either 20, she's between 25 and 20, she's 26. She's six years older than me, almost 27. So she was only 18 months old at the time. And me and my sister, Casey, we're, I'm 20, turned 21 in January, and my sister turns 22 in January. So this was several years before we were even born. My older sister, Jessica, who turns uh, 27 in March, she, um, she was only a little baby. So, I mean, there's that, like, okay. So, and I mean, that almost killed him. Like, he's very lucky. That's a fuck, it's a fucking miracle he survived. But 
uh, there were some complications. I think there, there some fluid fucked with his brain. And I mean, he couldn't work anymore. And I think, I think that that really affected him because my dad, uh, I mean, uh, me, I'm a very proud person too. And my mom says that I'm a lot like my dad. Maybe she's talking about the negative aspects. I don't know. But I think the, uh, the knowledge that he doesn't, is not able to work. Let me check this to see if I'm, oh, yeah, I'm good. The knowledge that you know, you're not able to work is a very, uh, I think it's a very depressing thing for him. So he you know, just turned to like alcohol or drugs and shit. I, I, and I've only seen him on alcohol that I know of. And I've also seen him on, uh, he, I have ADHD, so I take, uh, I was prescribed ADHD, you know. So I used to take Ritalin and Concerta. And I think, uh, at some point he took my Concerta, and I remember thinking, like, wow, he's pretty cool, he's on Concerta. <laughs> I don't mind you taking my pills, Dad. When I was like, uh, I think I was 11 or 12. Um, but my mom said that he's done like everything. But my mom is also against marijuana, so I don't know what he's done. I assume, I think he might have done like some psychedelics maybe and some uh, weed. She said that he would do, he, he did uh, everything, like crank, which is, I personally, I don't even know what the fuck crank is. Like I thought it was, I think it's speed. I'm pretty sure it's slang term for speed, but, it said, but yeah, uh, recently I heard like they're like it was cocaine, but it had crank in it. I'm like, what the fuck? But I don't know. I can't see my dad doing crack or meth or heroin. I think he, I think speed, alcohol, and marijuana and psychedelics, which honestly, personally, and this is gonna sound fucked up, but for me, I think those are really the safe drugs. The date, the most dangerous one is. Uh, and uh, speed because because if you you know overdose on that and you're kind of I mean you can actually holy fuck I got a phone call oh it's my mom hey c what do you need right now no I'm just doing something real quick guys I love you but yeah but I I got my own medicine. Yeah, uh, you. Yeah, I got you. I got you forty bucks. Mhm. Mm I don't. I didn't see it actually come in, but whatever. I. I, I mean, I said like you. You have only sixty-eight cents in your bank, so I think they took out the sixty-eight bucks. So I'm like, yay. What time do you think you're gonna be home tonight? Nothing. I was just making some like really. I wanted to. I was writing uh, something on your computer, and I just wanted it. Uh, I just wanted to use it. I didn't want you to like. Um, I mean, uh, I wanted. I mean, I wanted it to be like an hour, because it's actually kind of like a podcast thing. I'm like talking. Okay, I love you. Uh, bye. Sorry about that. I kind of forgot what I was talking about. Oh uh, yeah, amphetamines. Uh, uh, if it even overdose on amphetamines, so that's kind of dangerous. Uh, but for the most part, I, I mean, marijuana, all it does is open your mind. Psychedelics, as long as you take them in the right environment, all they do is open your mind. By the way, I would, if you're under 18, don't even fucking, don't, I wouldn't do drugs unless I'm over 18. Just because you're really fucking hurting your brain. You gotta, you gotta realize, you have a developing brain, okay? So once you're, I mean, if you're, I wouldn't fuck with a developing brain. Like, do I think marijuana fucks with you and age? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't really know that many. A lot of my friends that have done marijuana, when they, like a lot of my, I hung out with like the stoner crowd in school, in high school, and the skaters. So I mean, obviously a lot, there's a lot of marijuana going on. But I also live in a small town, so I don't know how strong that weed was. You know, small towns, you get whatever weed you can get. Large. Big towns, I mean, there's more of a selection. You can actually, there's always bank, which is high grade shit in a big town. In a small town, you're probably going to deal with a lot of dirt weed. But, um, back to my dad. So he, you know, did a lot of drugs and stuff. But anyway, he, after this accident, he was, I assume he was very depressed because he realized, that, well, I can't work, I can't support my family. My wife had to drop out of college and she's got to work three jobs to support me. I, I think there's a lot of self-hatred in that. And I think that he took that out on, uh, cause on uh, his family inadvertently because my dad's not college educated. He, doesn't have a he dropped out of high school whenever in the 10th grade. 
And from that accident, by the way, workers' comp, the max you get paid is like $100,000, and his medical bills were over like $4 million. So it really fucked up my mom's credit, fucked up like all of our credit, really. And it really, I mean, yeah, I think he got a house with it, uh, but we had to, at one point, my mom sold the house. And I think really that after she sold the house, that's when I really got really, really bad. But I don't know, you know, I don't remember so much as a kid and living in that first house. I think I removed it when I was seven or eight. We moved again to a really, really crappy house. I'm talking, there was no walls in it, there was no insulation. I mean, there was outside walls, inside there was no walls, there was no carpet. I'd constantly get splinters, um, there was no ceiling. Like, there was, it was like the frame of a fucking house with, with stuff. And, and for some reason, my mom bought it. She's like, yeah, because the payments were really low, and, you know, we're poor. She, she's never, she's got to, she takes any job she can fucking get. And she's got multiple jobs. She, you know, she worked at, when you're, she, I think she was 30, fucking two or 36 and she still had to like get work at McDonald's and all these other jobs just because the telemarketing jobs in there I love my mom a lot she works really hard uh, for what just to provide for uh, you know her family but uh, I think personality wise I do I I love my dad more but it, I mean it took so long for me to realize that he's a pretty cool guy because I think I was just so scared of him but then whenever I was like 15 or 16 and then it you know, you go through your rebellious stage, and it was just like, fuck my dad, you know what I mean? So, you don't really think about it from his point of view, you think about it from your own, it's kind of selfish. But, anyways, my dad loved rock and roll, like, anything past days. I remember one time, uh, whenever I was really getting into music, I think I was 13 or 14, and I was like, listen, I was getting into Motorhead a lot. Love Motorhead. For the longest time, dude, Motorhead, until I found Type O Negative, Motorhead was pretty much all I listened to. Just because, uh, I mean, I found I found metal through VH1. There was in 2003, 2004. There was going through like there was going through a period where it was like metal. They were super into metal, but all it was was like glam metal and 80s metal, and like and so that's all I knew. And I, I'd seen it, and I was kind of like, what the fuck is this shit? I wanted to get into Slayer and Megadeth and that kind of stuff, but they didn't show those videos very much. They they only showed like I like Metallica, but. I loved Motorhead so much, dude. Like, it was like all I listened to until I found a band called Type of Negative. I don't want to talk about that. But anyways, I was listening to Motorhead, and I forget which song. I might have been a song called Rock and Roll, which is like, I'm in love! It's a fucking cool song. My dad and I listened to that, and my dad was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, that, this is, uh, this was 2005. I'm pretty sure this was 2005. It might have been 2000, late 2004. But I'm pretty sure it was really late 2005. Uh, like December and he was like what is this and I was like oh dad this is Motorhead it's like a really good rock and roll band from the 80s like, you, you, you like it he's like man this ain't he's like, just got mad this ain't fucking rock and roll I love my dad man he was into Sabbath and Zeppelin and all that but as a you know as a little kid remember he'd work on the house and he would listen to fucking he had tapes he had shitloads of tapes and a, and a pretty good stereo system and he listened to, like, Black Sabbath Paranoid. Seriously, like, I personally, like, it seems like, seems like it, it seems like he did this for a period of, like, a month or two. But, I, you know, whenever you're a kid, it, time goes by, it seems like time goes by so much slower as a kid. So it could have been, like, a, a week. And I just thought, man, it's like he listened to this every day. But I remember, it was like, man, this is a cool music, Dad. And he's like, yeah. And he's talking about World War Pigs. He's like, this song is about how shitty the war, like, you know, like the government is and they'll try to get you to war. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really know my dad, you know, until, like, I think about, until I think about it and it's well, I'm like, wow, my dad was a pretty cool guy. I know he loved me. And even though he yelled at me, you know, I know he loved me. So, I guess the message of this is, kids, the, to talk to your fucking parents, don't be afraid of them. I, I, I regret it. My dad died when I was 18, almost 19, and I mean, I hadn't found myself as a person yet. Uh, but I regret every day, I mean, I listen to, I've, all the Black Sabbath, the first four of, like, my favorite fucking records, and I listen to them all the time on vinyl, and every time I listen, I'm just, there's a little part of me that's sad, because it's like, I wish I could listen with my dad, like, how cool would this be to listen to fucking Winning with my father, or, or Paranoid, or even Master of Reality, yeah. the only uh, Sabbath that he ever, that I ever remember, recall him listening to was Paranoid, but he might have listened to the first one, too. He might have listened to the original self-title, because I, I, they, but I might be full of shit, you know. I don't know. 
But I, I remember he always listened to Led Zeppelin. That was his ringtone when he died. Um, I don't know. I, I love him. I miss him. Uh, he had a rough life, though. You know, before he died, my mom, she divorced him. She got to a point where he, she, I was like, I think I was 15. Yeah, I was 15. And she, uh, he got drunk one time. And just, I think he, he hit me. And she, um, he didn't hit me that hard, but he hit me hard enough where I was like, man, I'm fuck it. I was mad, and I was like, fuck it. I'm calling the cops. And I called the police on him, and he had to, he went to jail. And uh, we were vacationing soon, and we kind of needed to, no one had told him yet that, that, like, you know, hey, we're going to California uh, with that. We're not bringing you with us. And it wasn't a mean thing. The, the, the thing that's fucked up about this is he's from California, and he'd always wanted to go. But he was so negative. Like I remember, man. It seems like as a as a family, a lot of time was spent avoiding this 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 uh, this man just because he yelled. And he was such a negative. Uh, he he brought such a negative uh, vibe towards us all. Um, so it was very, I think, difficult for uh, for him because he realized that. And there were several times. I don't want to talk about gross shit, man. But I definitely see elements of my dad in me uh, as. And uh, so, I don't know though. Should, my mom says he was very different before the accident. She said he was really nice, never yelled. Then after the accident, it was like he was a different person. And she's not sure. I think he might have had. I think he had open heart surgery. Um, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously they had to do a lot of shit. He had a fucking metal, rusty metal pipe. They went around. They went through here and went out here. There was two big. He had a big fucking scar right here. It was like all the way down to here. And all the way in a huge scar, and then right here, it was scarred so, like his entire side, and it was like down, it looked like it was stitched, and it would never, like, you know, it wasn't like it's, it wasn't just a mark, like his skin wasn't, it was like folded over. Um, uh, so, yeah, man, bond with your parents, ask them questions, you know. I, I that's how I bond with my mom, I used to just ask her questions about her. I, I loved her so much, partly because it's like, I felt that she, you know, she led me to a better life because she worked so hard and then she finally got a good job. And I was like, oh my God, you're so, this is amazing. Uh, and um, so I just, I, I just asked her questions because I was genuinely curious about what she was like as a kid. And I mean, it's cool. I mean, you ask them, I mean, get to know them because, you know, whenever I realized, you know, once they're gone, and this is before my dad died, unfortunately, I was so, I even, I didn't realize that, that I was afraid of him. And I tried to avoid him until I mean, until like a few years after he died. Um, but I mean, once they're gone, you know, you can't ever fucking ask them any questions. And I dream about my dad all the time, and it's always it's always like I was hanging out. It's always pretty good stuff. And I mean, it sucks because later in life, you know, you're gonna come back to them and wanna you're gonna wanna ask them questions like, how the fuck did you do it? Because everything you're going through, now, dude, everything your parents have been through this shit. They've been 16, they've grown to, they've been confused about their self-identity, they've been through it all. Adults have been through this shit. I don't think the youth re realizes that adults were fucking kids at one point too, they were youthful. And they were always boring. You know what I mean? They were fucking 16, they were 20, they had self-identity issues, they had, I don't know what I'm going to do with my future. And I, I think that's what's kind of strange is the idea of growing up, what, what does that mean? I think a lot. I, I think some people think that it means there's a certain amount of uh, self-acceptance where you realize, like, well, I'm just a per I'm just a part of a fucking machine, and you know what? I guess I'll. I, I okay. Here's what I think. I think either a having kids. Once you have kids, I think a lot of people realize that. Uh, whoa. Okay. I I've got kids now. Like I can't focus on myself. My life. My life is done. Everything I do now has to be for the kids. Okay, because I, I, I mean, because I know that there, there are chemical changes that they're having in, in both males and females whenever kids are born. That that's why you love them so much. So I think that's a big part of why they're born. You wonder why are their parents so uncool? It's because they had you, you little fuck. So you appreciate them for real. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of them. I mean, just talk to them. You know, just talk to them like adults, and you know, ho hopefully they'll have the same f respect for you. And that's another thing. I mean, when you talk to people. And I, man, I'm not trying to be preach. I'm not telling you what to do with your life. You know, this this is just me talking, and I got on a depressing fucking subject. I wish I could talk about interesting shit, 
But uh, <laughs> I was supposed to be talking about Black Sabbath. Suddenly, I got talking to some 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 really downy shit. <sighs> so let's talk about Black Sabbath. Love your parents, though. Um, the first album, man. Uh, those first four albums, you know, Black Sabbath, Paranoid, Master of Reality, and Volume Four, are insanely good. I would say, I mean, and they're so hard to list, like. Because really, which ones do I like the most? The ones that I've listened to the most. Um, Master of Reality is definitely my favorite. Because that, that's the one, like, every single fucking track I love. Lord of This World, I mean, that's my shit. I, how can you not listen to Lord of This World and feel awesome? I don't know. Uh, Sweetly is a good song. It's, I think it's overrated. And it's actually, if you listen to the album, it's the, it kind of doesn't fit. But it's a really good song. I mean, obviously, Black Sabbath is a good band to get high to. I mean, I mean, and ask your fucking parents. I, I definitely think your parents are cooler than you, because music nowadays is extremely shitty in comparison to the mu music of the 70s. And the 60s and 70s is god-tier fucking music. I, I don't give a fuck. It went way downhill in the 80s, and I've always, uh, I mean, except for the underground stuff, you know. I mean, I like, I, uh, okay, when I say music, I mean popular music. I, Right now, I, I love modern music because with the internet, it's so easy to fucking get. And there's so much stuff that, that so everybody's releasing shit, and so it's, there's no underground. You don't gotta do crazy shit to access music anymore. You don't gotta read fanzines. You can just download their stuff, or people, they'll give it away for free. We live in a time where any, every, seriously, ev music's free. Whether, whether you like it or not, uh, record labels, it's free. There's nothing that you can do about it. It's too far gone. All, the most you can do about it is try to figure out a way to provide all your music for free while still making some money. That's the most you can do. And honestly, this is really good for bands because it's not good for popular bands because they're not selling as much. Cause they, but people don't, but what you don't realize is that bands do not make a, a, a lot of money. The popular bands, I think Courtney Love, Talk shit about her all you want. She's smart. If she, she's, got, she's got more money than you. you. You don't get this much. You don't make it this far in this business without, you know, having some sort of uh, smart. Who the fuck is this? Hello? Yeah, who is this? Uh, I'll call my mom and tell her to, to come by. Or, yeah, I'll, call, I'll tell my mom you called. I'm not going to be able to make it today. I'm s Are you guys open Saturday? I, it, probably tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. I'm so sorry I keep rescheduling it. I'm not. It's not intentional. I just. Okay. I'm. S okay. I'll. I'll try my hardest. Okay. Thank you. Wait. When, when do you guys close? Okay. Well, I'm. I'll, I'll tell my mom to call you. Okay? Alright, thanks. Okay, here's the thing with that call. These, I, I fucking, we forg- we, man, okay, we took a, a loan just to get my, just to build my credit up. But, we, and we always overpay, we always give them more money than we need for the loan, and then one day we forgot, and, we, and they're like, oh, you actually, you gave us uh, 72, it's actually 74. We're gonna need that $2. I was like, okay. But I forgot about it. My, I got in a car wreck the same fucking day, so I forgot about it. And they're like, well, now there's going to be a late fee, a $25 late fee for two fucking dollars. Are you kidding me, motherfucker? How many times have I ever paid? So I think my mom's just going to call him up and she's going to talk him out of it. And by the way, if you ever want to, if you ever, you can, okay, this is a piece of information I learned really recently from the Joe Rogan podcast, Bill Burr, actually, um, but it, it makes so much sense, and I'm so glad I learned this. Um, when you, uh, when you get mad at, you know, places or policies or anything like that, do not take your frustrations out on the person that you're talking to on the phone or the person at the register or anybody. Don't, and you have to be calm about it, too. Or they're just going to be like, get out of it, you know, because they're humans. Even though if, if you're yelling at them, they're going to be upset. So what you got to do is just, no matter what, this is unacceptable. Uh, I'd like to speak to the person above you. you know, I'd like to... I'd like to speak to someone that can fix this. I'm not, either I'm not paying for this or this is unacceptable. But eventually you'll get, you'll get to a, a, a level where you can get what you want. Uh, I'm, 
I used to work in retail, I worked at Best Buy for a year, and it never ceases to amaze me how, um, I mean, we've done crazy shit for customers all the time. It, you, here's a here's a something that you, you probably don't know about Best Buy, but at least a year ago, I mean, they might have changed some policies now. I've heard that they at the current Best Buy, they, but they did change it, but I don't know. But what we would do is to sell, I worked at DSLRs, and we would try to do crazy shit to, to get people to, you know, get, get SLRs, because there are so many accessories for it. So we could, I mean, you can, like, Okay, I can give you, I can give you this, the camera that might be marked for 99, you can get it for cheaper. Like a fucking, you can have it with these fucks like a car salesman does. As long as you talk to the blue people in the blue shirts. Don't be afraid. I think a lot of people are afraid of these Best Buy employees. They're like, oh, because, but you got to know who the cool ones are. You got to know, the people that, the people that are there that know what the fuck they're talking about, those are the ones you're going to see. The people that are there just because they need the money, okay, avoid them because they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about making a sale. The Best Buy is a job to them. Whenever I worked at Best Buy, I mean, I put any job I do, I put 100%. And this is another really important piece of advice. Uh, anything you do, give it, give it your all. You're wasting your time otherwise. Even if you don't want to do it, if you have a job that you think sucks, first of all, fucking quit if it's that bad. Second of all, I mean, but really, the biggest thing is just do it as hard as you can. You're only going to be if you do, if you do shitty, you're only hurting yourself. So I don't understand why you're gonna. Why you want to try to do, you know, why are you going to try to do a shitty job? You know, you got to do, always do your hardest. Always give it your all. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. There's some, something good can come out of it. You might get pussy, boys. Ladies, I don't know. I'm kind of, miso I've, I've learned that I'm a little bit misogynistic. Uh, I, I have a very low tolerance for women, especially lately, white women. I have I've had uh, black girlfriends in the past, and I like them because they're less. There's not bullshit, and by bullshit I mean games. White women love to play these fucking games where they'll, you know, <sighs> Doug Stanhope said it best when he's like they unionized pussy, where they they for some reason they feel like I think a lot of girls feel that oh I can't fuck him when because I just know because I'll feel like a whore, but it's like. As a guy who's wired to fuck, you're just like, this is a waste of time, you know? Uh, for me, and I've a lot of, I've been on a lot of fucking dates where I was questionable about the girl, but I was horny, so I was like, okay, I'll try my hardest because I might get some pussy out of this. And then they didn't give me pussy, so I went home, jacked off, and women, I don't know if you're a girl who's watching this, uh, when I jack off, I'm a completely different person. Joe Rogan has a bit on this, and this is, um, he said it best, when he's like, Okay, so when I'm not horny, I'm, I'm in control. So right now I'm not horny, I'm in control. But when I'm horny, it's like, it's like I'm driving a bus. Okay, right now I'm the one driving the bus. When I'm horny, it's like, so okay, so I'm telling my butt myself, okay, yeah, do this, do this, yeah, do this. And my body's doing it. But whenever I'm horny, it's like I'm not, I'm not driving, driving the bus, my cock is driving the bus. So instead of me, sh so instead of me just sit, sit and telling him, like, do this, I'm all the way at the end of the bus. I've got to like yell at my dad, like, what? What are you talking about? And I mean, this is true, because I've done like, I've all, I, I feel that I've got my head straight on my shoulders. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm just unfamiliar with, and I don't and I understand the concept of, so I don't like, I, you know, get into it so much. But um, for a lot of like personal philosophies, like I can understand where people are coming from and stuff. When I'm horny, dude, I will say anything to get, try to get a girl to fuck me. I mean, like, I, it sounds fucked up. I'm going to turn the air off. I don't know if it's making a lot of background noise. But yeah, I'll say anything. And I mean, I've done hurtful things. And I... I don't know, man. I'm not, you know... I don't want to talk about, like, relationships and shit. I don't want to talk about... I don't want to try to think... I don't want to, like... You know, self help or anything. I just want to talk. You know, this is just my thoughts. This isn't me. Really, I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm not trying to tell you, you know, do this, do this, do this. Or, this is what you should do. Because I, I'm just saying, like, for me, this is what works and this is what I've noticed. Um, as far as like relationships and shit go, I would, uh, I would advise. I mean, okay, so I'll, I'll say anything to get pussy, and it's really bad whenever I have a girlfriend because suddenly 
I, I can see myself doing it, or I'm kind of just like using them for pussy, but I'm like, um, you know, I don't know what to fucking say to them. Because relationships, I get to a point where I realize, like, okay, I don't really, oh man, I, I'm on, I'm going to have to mute it. Where I, I, I get to a point where I'm like, so I realize that, like, okay, so I don't, I probably don't really love them. You know, I, I mean, I like them. Uh, they have a similar taste to me, but there's some, but there's stuff about them that I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I prefer talking to men, not sexually, not mentally, but just men. You can talk to them more freely. Girls, there's always a ew factor. Like, I like discussing pornography. It's fun. I like talking about men shit. And girls don't, girls don't understand what it's like to be a guy. They don't have testosterone running through their body. They don't have. Um, pressure to, uh, you know, like, have sex and stuff, they don't have to, they don't have to worry about that, men, co men come up to them, women don't, don't come up to guys, sexy guys, they're, they're not fighting off pussy, you know, girls are smiling at them and shit, yeah, but, they're not like, sexy girls, guys are constantly coming up to them and being like, hey, so, can I get you something, I'll buy you this, no girl has gone up to any fucking guy and tried to just outright say, I'll be your sugar, fucking mama. And, I mean, is that bullshit? Kind of. I mean, I'll say, here's the best quote I've heard about it. I've heard about this type of subject, and, I mean, it's the one that's given me the most insight. Uh, there's, a, there's a pretty popular thing, and everybody says it, but it's feminists bring up all the time. like, how come it's okay for guys to... How come it's okay for a guy, and this is a comedian, I forget the, I think he's an Australian, I think it's Pinchman or something, I don't, I'm not a huge fan, but this makes a lot of sense. Um, why is it okay for guys to have sex with a lot of different girls? When they do that, it's like, wow, they're awesome. But when a girl has sex with a lot of different guys, it's like, oh, she's a slut. You know, and uh, the answer to that is because it's fucking hard to fuck girls. That guy ha is, has skills, and he's using them. It's not, it's not very hard for a girl to fuck a lot of guys. I mean... It's not hard at all, and, and I'll give you an example of this, and this is going to sound fucked up, but I love to troll people, and I like to confuse them, I think it's an art form, and I just like doing weird shit to fuck with people, so what I've been doing lately is on Craigslist, I, on ads, if I just see somebody I like, I'll, I'll say, I'll reply, I'll email them back, uh, I'll blow you for the item. And I'm pretty surprised at the amount of responses where they're like, yeah, uh, can you call me? Here's my phone number. Because it's like, wow, this is, um... Oh no, what the fuck? Um... I don't know, you know, since I, I was talking to my bro Kogobo. I don't know why the fuck I did this just now. But um, so yeah, it's it's easy it's easy for girls to get dick. It's not it's not easy for guys to get pussy, especially good pussy, uh, and even bad pussy. J Doug Stanhope, uh, another comedian who you should look listen to because he's fucking awesome, and uh, he has a bit he has a whole bit where it's like women have unionized pussy, and that's so true. Because I mean I'm a fit dude. I think I'm interesting. I'm fun to be around. I got muscles. I'm clearly. This this webcam shows my acting too much. I'm I'm like a fucking seven, and I'll pick up. I've been on dates with like fucking twos, and they're like, still they still three dates really uh, for me to fuck you? Come on, dude. I'm I'm way more attractive than you. I, I've he said uh, the best the best part he said about it is oh I've lowered my standards quite a bit to make it here tonight, ma'am. I think you should. Girls don't do that. They don't give a fuck for some reason. 
they all, like, I hate it when I hear girls bitching about, like, oh, there's no good men out there. No, there's good men out there. You're a fucking retard. Okay, you have too high standards. You're fat. You get, you get fit. You know what I've never seen? I've never seen a girl that's fit that's bitching about men. I've never seen a fit girl. She might be bitching about how a fucking, or I've never seen a girl that's not, you know, physically fit and mentally fit. Because there are, I mean, you know, there are girls that are physically fit and not mentally fit. But it's because I mean, and by the way, let's get let's talk about working out. I love working out, dude. Work out. It's the easiest thing that I've done that you can do to make your life a way more better. If you're are you depressed, I would cons I would really work out. Just it's it's so easy. It's an hour a day. Just just do research, lift, just lift, weight, li just weight lift three times a week. An hour of weight lifting three times a week. It'll make a big difference, and it makes you feel good. It releases endorphins in your head, which makes you happy. For me, I think it increases testosterone because afterwards, I feel like, man, I'm ready to fucking take on the world. And it, uh, you know, it makes it makes you more attractive. It makes you feel better about yourself. I think a lot of depression comes from people who don't have enough confidence. I, I personally, like, I found out that you know, I don't have a whole lot of confidence when it, I've got a lot of self-confidence issues. Both, both could like when I talk to like intellectuals, I get very scared and nervous. Like, oh, they're gonna embarrass me. They're gonna think I'm stupid. And you know, when I talk to people that are more fit than me or bigger, I'm thinking, oh, they're gonna think I'm stupid. But as long as you have confidence, then people don't give a fuck. And I mean, that's like the biggest problem that I've experienced that with me. That I'm trying to constantly fix is that. And I think a lot of people, if they would just work out, they'd feel so much better about themselves. And it's not hard. I want to let you know that it's not hard. At the gym, no one makes fun of you, no one gives a fuck. I, I've constantly, like on the machines, which, by the way, I don't recommend using machines to work out, use free weights. Um, but I've asked people for help, and they've been nothing but helpful. You know what I mean? It, 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 do you have a friend? Go with them. Easy. There you go. Solution solved. Do they, not, do they work out? Probably not. Go with them. There's that support. It is fucking scary going, I mean, it's a kind of scary going alone, but it's not that bad. It's really not that bad. And you know what? I'm not fat. I've never been fat. So it's not like I, I'm not, you know, a fatty at a gym. But, but here, if you are fat, whenever I see fat people at the gym, I'm like, good for them. You know what I mean? I'm not fucking making fun of them or anything like that. I'm like, good for them. The only time, the only people at the gym that I, I make fun of are the people that waste fucking time because they're doing stupid exercises. And this is another, if you're going to work out, okay, you know why it's called no pain, no gain? Because it fucking hurts. Like, it's going to hurt. you got to get yourself to a level where, where you're uncomfortable to start getting big, to, to, if you want to see results. If you're, you're not going to get, you're not going to get your ideal body by doing stuff that doesn't take you out of your comfort zone. You know, you're going to, you're going to, when you run, you're going to tell yourself, like, I can't do this. I can't do this. You're going to tell yourself that. But you gotta push forward, and you know it's really for me. Uh, the thing that really got me into it was cycling, it was by riding my bike, because. And I will let you know, by the way, the first workouts are extremely hard. They're they wear you the fuck out. But we, they're not all. They're gonna, you're gonna get to a level where it's not. They're not always that hard. But you're not always gonna be that exhausted. The reason that you're that getting that exhausted is because your body's not used to this, and it's kind of like freaking out. But you're not going to die. Your body actually, whatever you think, you're, at, you're giving it, you're like, oh, I have nothing left in me. You, that's usually, so I, 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 read it, I saw this on a video, but it sounds, I mean, it sounds legit. For most people, they're only, that's only like 40%. 40% of what they can do. So if you tell yourself that, and, okay, I got off topic. Okay, so, what happened with me is like, I'm riding a bicycle. And I ride it every day, and then, and I'd be like, Whew. Okay, I'm, I'm getting a little tired, so I'm going to slow down a little bit. Well, this happened for about two weeks, and then eventually I was like, wait a second. Okay, I'm stronger than this. I'm not going to I'm not gonna let this fucking bike tell me to slow down. I can do. I can go faster than this. Uh, the only thing that's preventing me from going faster is that I'm, sl I, and I was saying this as I was cycling, uh, is that I'm, you know, in my head, I'm telling myself I can't. But I can do this. This is bullshit. So, I, I mean, I go faster, and I always go as hard as I can on my bike. And I mean, that's how you got to approach your work around. You have to set goals for yourself. I recommend getting a notebook where you're like, you know, where you 
jotting shit down. Otherwise, you're gonna. It's easy to forget. It's extremely easy to forget. And it's not that hard. You know, took five minutes. I have a notebook. I know one fifty-five bench. Do this today, and then that's it. And uh, you know, you have to increase the level. You're not gonna. Your body's gonna adapt. Your body adapts to not only the workouts that you do, but the weight that you. Do. Or not just the weight, but the workouts. So. You, I mean, that's you're gonna have to add eventually if you want to if you want to get real into it. You know, you're gonna have to add more more. Uh, you're gonna have to add more routines to your exercise. But I, I mean, it's awesome. I, I, I the I would say there's probably. I would say I mean the percentage of people that work out and are fit and unhappy is way lower than the number of people who don't work out and are unhappy. It's a good way. It's a good way to get rid of stress. It's a good way to, I mean, feel good about yourself, and it encourages getting off your fucking ass. Cause that's the biggest, that's the biggest problem with me is a lot of times I get, like that's why I'm, that's one of the reasons I'm so against uh, like RuneScape and a lot of MMORPGs, but RuneScape particularly. Let's, you know what? Let's go ahead and talk about fucking why I really I fucking despise RuneScape because I feel that RuneScape is such a waste of potential, such a fucking waste of potential. You know, because I, I recall my years playing RuneScape, I look back at those and I'm like, man, what, look at what all I could have done with that time I spent playing RuneScape. I mean, what could I have done? And I always, I, by the way, I, I get on RuneScape, I log on for like maybe 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes now that I don't have a job. I ask people all the fucking time, why do you play this? Never get a straight answer. Never get it's always something bullshit. Like, I mean, I mean the answers are usually like, I mean, it's fun. Why everybody else plays it, it's fun. I'm, and I'm like, why? How do you consider this fun? I, that's that's what's so alarming to me because this is not fun. This is extremely not fun. The whole game is designed is built upon uh, this. Pavlovian effect where in our heads we feel that you know we like we like getting congratulated you know when you first start out you you, you level really fast you know, so it's easy to set goals it's easy to go like, oh shit I want to make my guy as strong as I fucking can because I'm loving him so great I'm already level I'm already level 10 I've only been playing an hour well and people that have played RuneScape will know this is the, the leveling system is like so when every seven every seven levels when you hit that seventh level, the, the next seven levels from now is double what you have all the experience you've gained. So what that means, I don't, I don't know if I worded that right, so I'll try to explain it in a mathematical form. So let's, let's say that to get to level seven in the skill, you need 10 experience points, which I, I think it's actually like 200 or something, I don't fucking know. So 10 experience points. That means if you want to get from level seven to 14, you will need to, uh, on, including that 10, you will have to get 20 experience points. So all together, so to get to level 14 from level zero, you need 30 experience points. And this goes, so what happens is, uh, at, when you're level 93, when you hit level 90 fucking three, or 92, you're only halfway to, to getting to level 99. And that, I mean, and that's fucking ridiculous, because it gets to the point where you're leveling every single day, where you're, you're giving, you I mean, you're playing this shit all day, like 10 fucking hours and you're only getting one level. And that, to me, that's why it's so full, of, that's why it's so shitty. Because it's like, well, you know, I mean, it's people say like easy 99s. Cooking's an easy 99. Fletching's an easy 99. Magic's an easy 99. Maybe for you, but I really, but first of all, whenever you do those skills, you do have, there's a lot of clicking, and if you want to be as efficient as possible, you, it's, you can't type. And so that's not easy, because it's extremely boring shit. I mean, that's extremely fucking boring. Like, I, I want, I mean, if you tell me that that's fun, if you consider that fun, you're full of fucking shit. It's not fun alking for, for fucking 10 hours. Because all you do in the alk is click a fucking button and watch them do the same retarded fucking animation all over and get, you know, whatever money that you get. That's not fun. And you have to alk a fucking lot to get to high levels. It's extremely boring. I remember... I mean... It's extremely fucking boring. And fletching and all that shit. Fletching and cooking are worse because you have to type, like, cook all and fletch all. And, I mean... That's ridiculous. Woodcutting, 
In mining, I mean, just uh, equally as boring. You click a tree, you watch your character cut the fucking tree, and you go back to the bank. Every skill is like that. The only exception is, I mean, the, okay, so there's the skills like mining and move cutting, and combat's the same fucking way. You click something, wait, watch your character uh, destroy it while well, they get resources, and then click the set, and then wait for it to do it, and then get it again. Uh, I mean, fishing, wood cutting, mining, those are all the same. The only difference is, like, with combat, then you gotta watch your health, because if you die, you lose every fucking item that you have. And so, the, the gameplay, what I'm getting, the point that I'm trying to fucking make is the gameplay is retarded. It's not fun. It's extreme. It's not fun at all. It's, I mean, I, I please give me a, a, an argument as to why or how it could be fun. Because you're full of shit. If you consider that fun, you're a liar. And, uh, I mean, I don't like when people... Uh, and some people say it's relaxing. What the fuck? Why... Are video games supposed to be relaxing? I thought video games were supposed to be fun. If I want to... You know what else is relaxing? Yoga. You know what else is relaxing? Writing. Um, it's going to sleep. Listening to music. Why are you wasting your time on this? That's not you're not getting anything. I, I feel that with music and movies, uh, uh, I feel that with music and movies, you get something from it because it, 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 it triggers biological things, and movies make you think, and songs trigger biological things that make you you know happy. Music makes me happy. When I listen to a good song, I'm like, oh, I'm pumped up, or I'm ready, I'm really happy, and I'm real into it, you know. But games don't do that. It's really, it's really uh, crazy because I think people always compare video games to movies where it's like, yeah, mo video games are an interactive movie and it's kind of, I, I would disagree because movies have good stories and m uh, some games have good stories, a lot of them are poor and th uh, I, I, the thing is video games are so hard to nail because you have to have so much. There's the three big things. There's Gameplay graphics and story. Those are, for me, in my opinion, those are the three things uh, that you need to to have a, a, a successful video game. And it, even if you're missing one of them, then it, it's, I mean, it's like you're, the game's automatically going to be shitty. And it's such a hard, I mean, it's such a hard, especially gameplay and story. Graphics is kind of like, mm, maybe. But... The, the idea is to make it as immersive as possible, and it's so difficult to, to get a fine balance between those two. And my favorite types of video games are the ones that have multiple endings, because I feel that that's really... I, I think video games should be a form of storytelling, because I, in my personal opinion, if it's not a form of storytelling, then, I mean, it's kind of a waste of time. You're just, you're just reenacting stuff that you wish you could do in real life. Um, with, and the question is just like, well, why don't you do it in real life, or why don't you read a book or something, you know, else that works your imagination better? Video games are there's a there's a, I think there is a problem with overstimulation in society. When you get too stimulated, then you, you it's harder to enjoy other things. It's harder to focus on other things um, that are that are I mean more important. Uh, and so some people say they they play games get to have fun. So the my argument's like, well, it's not fun though. So what do you do? And then they say, well, I talk to friends, and, and I'm like, man, that's a tough argument because it's like, I talked to friends from a long time ago, and I'm like, well, you're playing though, and they don't have MSN or something. Like, meet new friends. You know what I mean? Like, and that sounds cold. I, I I know that that sounds really cold. Like, wow, meet new friends. But if I've evolved, I mean, I've moved on. If these people aren't going to move on, then I mean, what the, I mean, you know what? Why should I, or why should you, continue to play? I, I, here's my problem with it. Okay, getting down to the fucking nitty gritty. Let's forget the bullshit. Is that it, it's a waste of potential. You, it's like you're pushing pause on your life. You're like, okay, pause. I, I got to do this real quick, and it's a, such a retarded thing. And you spend so much time on it. You spend so much fucking time on this that does nothing for you. This thing does nothing for you. It does not make your life better. It's not going to make... It doesn't make your life better. I don't give a fuck. I mean, you could say, but it's fun, and I use it as an escape. No, fuck you. It does, it's not making your life better. You need, to, you need to fucking deal with your problems, or you need to, you know, you need to fucking 
assess your shit out and make yourself better. Stop playing this fucking game, man. You're better than this. You're smarter than this. Okay? You're smarter than this. And if you would fucking put as much effort into this, into something that you truly fucking love, find what you truly love, put as much effort into that as you do RuneScape, do you think, I mean, you would be probably a lot more happier and a lot more stable. You know what I mean? And for a lot of you fucks, especially on the forums, fucking write. Why don't you write legit? Why don't you write your thoughts out? Are you afraid of expressing yourself? Sure, you made it. Uh, I like fictional. I'm like, I'm, I don't got a problem with that. At least you're doing something. But I mean, dude, express your fucking thoughts. That's how. That's how society's gonna move on. You know, I, I'm. I'm interested personally. And people that are, you know, if you have thoughts, like I'm interested in your fucking thoughts. People are interested in your thoughts. Stop obsessing over retarded shit and go on and you know, and I'm not, it's not just RuneScape now anymore. I, I've stopped going to 4chan. To, I, I mean, I've stopped going to 4chan because 4chan's such a fucking negative place. And, it's, and I realized, like, it's just a bunch of fucking retards talking about stupid shit. There's not, there's not any good trolls anymore. It, there's, like, flavor of the month type of stuff. Like, it's, it's annoying. It's so fucking annoying when people say, like, hey, cool story, bro, or... You mad, dude? Especially when they do it wrong. It's like, no, I'm not fucking mad. I'm giving you a counter argument, motherfucker. This is this is this is what adults do. They give counter arguments. Okay, you're freaking out on me, asking me if I'm mad. I'm clearly not mad, and I hate it because people say you're mad, and then it's like they it's like you are by them saying that they are, you're already labeled as fucking mad. It's so ah oh man, like. I guess I'm mad talking about that when it, because I hate the fucking idea of it because well, retards use it hey, and it's like, oh, you just pulled out the automatic fucking win because you're too pussy to, you know, discuss it yourself. So you gotta, this is another thing that I've found in RuneScape is that people are too afraid to talk to me. Like, they're too afraid to, to speak their mind. So they hide behind internet memes or they, you know, attack me. And, oh, you're just a fucking faggot, dude. Or you're a loser or whatever. It's like, are you? Why don't you just address my, um, you know, arguments and come up with something of your own? You know. And that's really the big in life. I think a lot of people have problems with is that is they are afraid to express themselves. They're afraid of other people might make fun of who I truly am. I don't want to. I don't want to express myself, and they don't. Th I'm not sure if they think about it or not. Or so I don't fucking know. But stop. Don't be afraid. Just tell. Just speak. You know what I mean. Think about it and speak instead of being a little immature goofball. And I, I think uh, honestly, I, I mostly got a free to play world, so a lot of it is. Uh, um, the people, I, I think a lot of it's just people being young, and you know, if you're, I guess, honestly, it's, it's not, if you're a young kid, it's like, um, okay, I guess, it, I, personally, I mean, I regret playing RuneScape being young, because I, I think I could have done a lot more with my life, but I, whenever I was 15, I was like, well, it's too late for me to do anything else, it's too late for me, because uh, I'm 15, but really, it's not, it's never too late, you know, work on something. Find, but we, yeah, find, find out what you, what you're good at creating, because, it's all about creating, and it's all about because when you create something, other people see it, 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 it makes them think, and that's the best thing. If everybody, if it makes people think, and it changes their life a little bit, and it makes, then you've all that. Then you've put you left your mark on the world. If you live through life. With